Good morning, guys. Welcome back to my channel. I'm here with another quick word um, that I believe is for many in the body of Christ. I just want to let you guys know before you before you apply this word to yourself, take it before the Lord and ask him for confirmation that this is for you because this is what I did. This is what I do. I need direct confirmation from God that this is my word over my life. So, without further delay, I'm just going to read um, what God has been speaking to me about. And it's in Genesis 21. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son, who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him, Isaac. Then Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Now Abraham was 100 years old when his son was born to him. And Sarah said, God has made me laugh, and all who were here will laugh. She also said, who would have said, Abraham, that Sarah would nurse children? For I have borne him a son in his old age. So, guys, let me tell you how this word came about. Um, I was actually at work, and my coworker relieved me for my lunch break. And when I came back to my area, she had the Bible open, just laying on the desk. So when she left, I actually picked up the Bible um, and it was open to open to this page, like on Genesis. Um, and then in, in the Bible at work, 21 was big. It was a big. The numbers are actually big in um, the Bible that I that we read at work. And then it was a star. Like, I don't know if she drew the star next to it or if it was already in the Bible when she began reading it or what. I'm not really sure. But it was open to Genesis, and then it had a star next to the 21. So that's where I began reading it, at, and I read it. And, like, the whole time I was reading it, it was like joy in my spirit. Like, something in my spirit leaked to life, and I felt an excitement. And I knew then that this is what God was speaking. But... I told him to confirm it. I said, God, if this is the word over my life, confirm it. So when I said that, I, I just kept reading it over and over. And then I noticed that today's date was um, April the 21st. So this is, a, on time, this is a timely word for now. He pointed out to me that the date that I read it, it was the 21st of April. And this is Genesis 21. He he just pointed out to me that this is what he's saying right now for right now. That promise that you've been believing in him for, that you've been waiting on, it is time. I don't take I don't take words like this lightly because I know how it feels to be believing in God for something for a long time. Some some promises that we've been believing in him for that we don't even talk about just because that is so close to our heart. But he's saying that promise that you've been holding on to is time. Y'all, I ask God for, when I pray, I say, God, give me confirmation, confirmation, confirmation. Because I'm not going to tell nobody they promise is coming, and then they go in still waiting two and three years. I know how they feel, and I wouldn't, I'm would i not going to get y'all excited like that. So that's why I'm saying take this word before God and tell him to give you confirmation because he confirmed it for me. Um, so I guess this is basically all I have to say is God said that it is time for that promise. And I need you guys to pray that anything that's withholding or preventing the promise in your life coming to pass 
whatever it is, I pray that God make it known to you. Lord God, and I pray that you give them the strength to release it, Lord God. Even if, if it's a person, I don't care if it's your friend, y'all been friends for years. Let God move them out of your life. Don't, listen, don't feel bad when you stop, people who you've been talking to for years, y'all stop talking. Because we are in a shift. We are in a season of change. Y'all yeah, been praying for change, right? This is the time that we're in. And I don't even have the words to say, but I just know I was real excited when God revealed this to me. And I just want to encourage somebody that the wait was not in vain. Take it from somebody who, who's waiting on God as well. That the wait was not in vain. And Ecclesiastes, I don't know where in Ecclesiastes, but it says, God makes all things beautiful in this time. So I know things don't might not be pretty right now. But on God's watch, God got a time where he going to bless. It's a blessing, you know. So, I'm not really sure what else God want to speak about as far as this word. But he also had me reading out of um, Joshua, where in the very beginning of Joshua, when Moses had died, he told Joshua, get ready, get the people ready, because we are about to cross over. Um, so, I... That's, I feel like that's where we are. We are at a time to get ready for the promise. Y'all, the Israelites been in the wilderness 40 years. And God took away their leader. But now he's talking about get ready because we finna cross over. God, you mean to tell me after all this now? Now you, you know, um, you about to give me my promise? After everybody that left me, oh my God, I feel Sarah, I feel Sarah pain, y'all. Sarah said, after all this, after my husband had got my slave pregnant, and now you gonna give me my promise? When God revealed this word to me, y'all, I just felt the spirit of repentance because in that time when that weight got hard, you felt forsaken. You, you'll you get mad with God, y'all. Can I just be open? Can I just be honest? That's why when something is really on, on my heart, I go ahead and talk to God about it. They say you don't supposed to question God, but God knows everything. He know that. He He see our heart. And he He know when we feeling confused. So I, I just go ahead and be like, why, God? Why? They got this. She got that. Why, why not me? But y'all got to understand in that timing where Sarah was in, your, she wasn't even, she probably didn't even feel like a woman because she never bore a child before. She never was pregnant before. But God did it so he could get the glory out of it. God did. God, some things we go through is for our testimony. It's for the glory. It's for the glory of God. Just to glorify God. Because can't could nobody else do it but God. God closed her womb. And he, he had a specific set date, second, that he was going to open her womb back up. And he, he sent some angels and told Abraham... Your wife gonna get pregnant and have a baby this time next year. And she laughed. <laughs> she laughed because she knew that her her time, the time in her understanding that she thought she could bear a child was up. But can I I just need to tell somebody that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. Let God be God. And it gets hard. She laughed because 
she, she didn't have that faith. She laughed because she really, she probably didn't say it, but she hadn't gave up on that promise. But I just came to tell some Sarahs to get ready. Get ready. Because God is speaking blessings, y'all. I wasn't even looking for a word like this. I was just, like I said, I was just seeking the heart of God to see what he would say. And this is what he said. He said, it's time. I can just see, picture God in heaven like, Looking at his watch like, oh, it's time for her blessing, y'all. So, I'm just, I'm really, really, really excited that I wanted to faint, but God wouldn't let me. I wanted to give up so many times, but he would not let me. Whew, oh, Jesus. Can you just imagine Sarah, that thing that she's been praying for and waiting on is right in her face. She's holding her promise. That's, that's our time. Jesus. Even Abraham questioned God when God told him, I'm going to make your descendants like the stars. He said, if you can count the stars in the sky, that's how many your descendants will be. They will be a great nation. How, God? I ain't got no children. But who is the potter to, who is the clay to question the potter and be like, who are you to ask the creator, what are you doing? What are you making me into? Who are you? But y'all, I just, this word, some, sometimes God just blows my mind that the creator himself would take the time out to just reveal himself to me and let and, and let me know how, what, what's on his mind right now. And I don't take that lightly. People try to give me, you know, titles. I'm a prophet, prophetess. I'm a preacher or whatever the case may be. And I'm not saying that I'm not, but I, I prayed and I asked God to reveal that, confirm that, Lord God, I want my title from you. If God didn't give it to me, I don't want it. I thank people for, for being in agreement, but Father God, I need you to confirm that to me first because it's not something that you can take lightly. Once you take on one of those offices, you now you know that God is trusting his sheep with you. And you're going to have to answer to him one day. And I just, I know that's a very big responsibility. But um, I don't know where, I don't, I'm not really sure where that came from. But that's for somebody who's just trying to be grabbing titles. I'm this, I'm that. You know, let God give you give you your title in his own time. But y'all, that's that's basically all I have is God said it's time. Ecclesiastes says it's a time and a season for everything. Oh, your your time for weeping is over. God said he gonna make you laugh. I know it's real funny because you've been waiting on your promise for so long. And y'all, I wanna I don't really know how, how, how long Abraham lived to see Isaac, but he was a hundred years old when Isaac was born. And I think he died. I don't, I don't wanna, you know. Just throw out a number, but he lived a long time. He lived long enough to see Isaac get a wife, you know. So don't think somebody is feeling like 
They running out of time. I commit my times and seasons into God's hands. God said, you will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I know you feel like you spend a great bit of time waiting on that promise. But you're going you gonna to live to see your promise. And you're going to live to see your promise grow. I know you feel like you've been toiling for no reason. But trust God. And because you fainted not, that promise will come to pass. So I just want to end this word by letting somebody know. Somebody who been waiting. I'm talking about waiting. I'm talking about you, you was waiting in tears, waiting in pain. You was waiting. When all you could do was cry out to God, but you still waited. You waited because God had gave you a promise that if you wait, if you faint not, he going to come through. And that's, that's the time that we're in. Who I don't know who this is for, but God did not create you to be empty. He didn't create you to be barren. When he, when he put Adam and Eve in the garden, he said, be fruitful and multiply. Everything that God created, he created it to give offspring. He created us to be fruit bearing. When he created the world, he ain't just say, let the world be and he left it dark and without form no he came there and he spoke some things into life and when he put the trees he he made the trees bear fruit he wanted his people to bear fruit to to give offspring he wanted his animals everything that god created listen it's a lie from the devil if you think that God put you here not to bear fruit, not to have kids, not to multiply, not to be happy, to be alone, to be dried up, it's a lie. And I rebuke and I bind every lie of the devil right now in the name of Jesus Christ that let these words come to you like a sword cutting through the lies of the enemy. I don't know how I can be speaking these words to y'all when I... I don't, I, I'm not, I never booth bear fruit before. I feel empty. I feel dry. I feel bare. But I thank God that God confirms his word. That I wasn't hallucinating when he said what he's going to do for me. So, Heavenly Father, I'm here again saying that let your will be done, Lord God. And Lord God, anything that's in the way of your will be, being done, Lord God, I, I give you permission, Lord God. I surrender that thing to you, Lord God, for you to remove it, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Lord God, I pray that you bless my fruit, Lord God. Jesus, because you said the fruit of my womb will be blessed, Lord God. You said that I will lend to many and borrow from none, Lord God. You said that the territory will be spacious, Lord God. Flowing with milk and honey, Lord God, in Jesus' name. God, I decree and I declare that it's my season to bear fruit in abundance, Lord God, Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word, Lord God. I thank you that you will never leave nor forsake your children, Lord God. I thank you that even though we felt like you had forgotten about us, Lord God. I thank you that you still had an appointed time. That even when we lost faith, Lord God, you are still faithful. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.